Hallelujah. Praise be to God. God is truly amazing. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your, your goodness and your grace and your loving kindness. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall indeed rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord, thank you. Oh, praise be to God. Lord, I give you a praise for this morning. I give you a praise, Lord, for this day. I give you a praise, Lord, for your loving kindness, for all the benefits that we have in Christ. On Christ, the solid rock, we stand because all other ground is but sinking sand. And we can boldly say that we are alive because God has made us alive in him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, praise be to God for this day, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him and sat down and taught themselves. And the scribe and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken into adultery. And when they had sat her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken into adultery in the very act. <laughs> now Moses in the law commanded us that we should that, that such should be stoned. But what said you? This day said, tempting him that they might have an occasion against him. <laughs> but Jesus Christ stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Right? So when they continue asking him, he lift up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin amongst you, let him cast a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted, by their own conscience went out one by one <laughs> beginning at the eldest even unto the last and Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst and Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman he said unto her Praise be to God. O oh, man, where art thou, those thine accusers, as no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. The Lord said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Ain't that beautiful? The very people who accuse you of so many things and will stone you they are guilty 
of so many things. A lot of people are hypocrites. They will laugh at you about your faults and your weakness, but yet still they have many flaws and faults themselves. There is no single person, there is no single person, yes, that is perfect, only God. If you hang on, I will pray for you, my friend. There is no single person that is perfect. Everyone has their fault and flaws. And it's only through Christ we can become perfect and be made perfected in our day-to-day -day life. We are tend to see other people's fault, but not knowing that people can see ours. This is what life is, you know. Many people, they look beautiful and they outside but in the inside it is rotten to the bones god know the heart of everyone yes he knows the heart of every individual i like to practice watching myself because whenever i have a problem with someone the problem could be very much me it's the problem I always tell people when they start to complain about so many things, check yourself first. Maybe there is something in you that is creating the environment that's around you. And such environment attract similar people and nature. The word of God said, deep call it forth unto the deep. So there are things that's going on in your life and it attracts the like nature, events, and environments around you. If you are sad, you will, you will attract people who are sad. If you are glad and happy, you will, you will basically welcome people who are happy. If you notice when somebody, maybe a woman or a person go, they are getting a divorce, they tend to find the same people of like nature who are going through divorce and begin to collaborate and talk to each other. People always tend to find something of similar nature to complement their condition and they never find healing because the person who you are seeking out and hanging out with of your same problem. And all the only thing it does is strengthen the problem and make it more complicated. So if you are broke, why hang around with people who are broke? If you are frustrated and happy and miserable, why hang around people miserable and frustrated? You see, people love to smoke. They hang around smokers, drink. They hang around drunken people because that's the way how they find joy in the thing that they are doing that they don't want to get rid of. So they find solace, peace in the things that they seem, that seem good to them. So if you are insecurity, you find people of a similar nature. And that's what's going on while so many people, they have so many pains because they, their pain attract people of like nature. This is why it's so important that you give your life to Jesus Christ because he is the repairer of the breach. He is the restorer of every given situation that can go so wrong. He is the potter. Yes, he is the potter. And he wants to reshape, remold, and rebuild you. Yes. God is everything. 
that you can hope for and desire. He wants to bless and empower you. He wants to make you whole, not in part. He wants to make you whole. If you're honest with yourself and you come to God and say, Lord, I need a fix. I am broken, busted, disgusted. I am in a situation, I'm, I have no money, I can't pay my bills. I am just frustrated, I am angry, I am bitter. If you are honest with God concerning everything that you're going through, God will come to your aid and deliver. God loves honesty. If you acknowledge your problems before God, you know, many people find it hard to pray. They struggle with praying, not knowing that this is how you should pray. You should use your condition and your situation as a platform for worship and honoring God. So whatever your condition is, that's supposed to be your altar for worship and praise. So if you are broken, if you are sick, if whatsoever condition you have, make it your altar before God and present it all to God in sincerity of heart. You say, God, this is what I am. I am. This is what I am facing right now. And you be honest and open with God because he already know your condition. He wants you to confess from your lips the conditions that you are facing. It's not that, it's not that he wants to know it because he already know it. He wants you to know it and to accept what you are facing. The soul, the repair can start at that point. A lot of people, they are living in denial. They cannot come to, their, come to the truth. They are believing lies about themselves. And the devil wants you to believe lies at all times. Some people would say they don't believe in the devil. The devil is happy and he rejoices and he shouts with anyone say they don't believe in the devil. They don't believe in demons. They are happy when you say that. But it but God, you make him very sad when you say you don't believe him and you don't believe the reality that's around you. If you want to be delivered, if you want to be set free, if you want to be strong, you need just read your Bible. Accept it for what it is saying. Don't try to twist the scripture to complement your condition. Don't try to make something out of nothing. Just be real with yourself. If you are ugly or you feel ugly and you say, Lord, I am ugly. Beautify me, Lord. Beautify me. You'll be so surprised how your countenance will change. You'll be so surprised how God will put things in order for you to feel good about yourself. When I was in school, this girl, I mean, she was not beautiful. I would consider her ugly, if that's a word to use. But she had pride in herself. She will. She was well dressed, clean. Her clothes was pressed. She had makeup on, and she wear this beautiful perfume. When you look on her face, even though she had this ugly look, you somewhat see a beauty because she was well spoken, well dressed, and smell good. She had can. Confidence in herself. She never allowed herself to carry low self-esteem. And she was beautiful to the eyes of them who were looking on her. Because they was not they were not seeing only the outward facial feature. She they were seeing her heart in her behavior and in her in her speech. 
and in her conduct, she was beautiful to so many people. Then you have people, they look beautiful. I'm saying, oh yes, they look beautiful, but in their heart, it is rotten. Only dirty stuff come from their lips and their eyes just look weird. You, even though you feel bad about yourself, what you must start doing, practice feeling good about yourself. Praise be to God. If you're loving what I'm saying, start loving me. Give me some rose and give me some heart. Let me feel good. Give me some likes. Yes, don't let me preach in vain, man. Come on, encourage a preacher, man. Let him feel good if you enjoy the message and share with your friends. Praise be to God. There goes some love. I like loving, you know. I love to be loved. Yes, glory be to God. Yes, so life is something that you need to cherish and appreciate it. God has created you unique. You as an individual, there is no other out there like you. God designed you perfectly, even though you have flaws, even though you might go through problems and different conditions and you feel sometimes you just want to die. You just want to get rid of everything that's around you. You feel lonely. You feel betrayed. All of what's going on in your life. Start appreciating your life. Start look on the positives instead of the negative. Start speak forth words of blessing in your life. Start declaring that I am blessed. I am well of God. I am highly favored of the Lord. I am God's child. Even when things not feeling good, start speaking the word from your mouth. Listen, the words from your mouth has power. When I'm saying your words from your mouth has power. The words that you speak is spirit. And when you speak it, it goes forth to accomplish the things that has been spoken. And worst, if you are a Christian, a child of God, your words have power. And when your your words leave your mouth, it doesn't go away. It goes in the atmosphere and those words start to manifest in and become the spoken word. Now, sometimes the the reason why your word don't come back to haunt you is that, you know, God and his mercies and his grace keep those words from being activated But the enemy will use your words against you. This is why when, you know, the the, the police reading your Miranda rights, they would say every word will be used against you in a court of law. You have to be careful. You have to be careful. The words coming from your lips, you must be careful because those words will be used sometime in the future against you. You might never know that it is used against you. Or the enemy will use your word against somebody to cause affliction in their lives. Because the enemy need tools to use in order to work. If we don't give the enemy any tool, there's nothing that he can do. Satan, I keep saying that he has absolutely no power. What he has is authority. This is why basically he can do so much things because we give him that authority. It's just like the government. The government can do what they are doing to to the people of this world because the people give them authority and power. If nobody votes for them, if no one support them, they have no power. They are just as simple as can be. But authority, they can do serious damage. 
we also must re recognize that God has given us authority and power. The power that we exercise and the authority that we exercise come through Christ and Christ only because he is the way, he is the door, and we have to be in total surrender to him in order to have that power and authority. Adam had power and authority. He, God put authority in him. God told Adam that he gave him dominion and power over the birds of the air, the fishes in the sea, and the beasts of the field. So God placed Adam authority of the atmosphere, the underworld, and the earth. Adam was very powerful and he was very wise, even than the angels. Adam, with Adam was created far much more superior to angels. A lot of people did not know. But what the enemy, the serpent, the devil did was to trick Adam to surrender his power and authority. Adam should have rebuked the devil. But Adam listened to and followed the command, the demand of Satan. And because of that, he, by design, surrendered his power and authority to the devil. And the devil was able to ascend it up in a place of authority over man, over humanity. And today, have that power. What Jesus Christ did was something marvelous, was something great, was something interesting. The mystery of God is in the cross of Jesus Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. When Jesus Christ, yes, came on earth, he came as a man. And if you study everything what he, what he did, he came through a woman, a virgin. So he did not have the blood of his father, Adam. Adam. And because of that, there was no sin in him. He was sinless. And he came to be a lamb, a, to be a sacrificial offering for man kind, humanity. That is the only requirement from the Father that, that, the, that he wanted to represent mankind in holiness and righteousness. Because man was in a fallen state and Jesus Christ come to repair what went wrong in the garden and also to repair what happened in heaven when Lucifer fell from heaven. So Jesus Christ, he, he, he came to do so much in his death, burial, and resurrection. When the scripture said, for God so loved the world, God could have said, for God so loved humanity, but he said the world. That means Jesus Christ died for the entire creation, all the aliens and entities and all of these angels, Jesus Christ died for every one of every existence he died for. The animal, he died for the beast, he died for everything of his creation. And he said that for he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, believe me, the whosoever is not only mankind, the whosoever is all of creation. The Bible said that all creation moans and groans for the sons of God to be redeemed from this earth. So everything is in bondage because of the fall of man. The beast of the field, the bird of the ear, the nature is in mourning, waiting for the adoptions of the sons of God. That is in Romans chapter 8. So man is very symbolic and and and. and Yes, man is very symbolic to everything that's going on. If man don't, don't do what they're supposed to do, 
by governing and ruling in the principles of God. Everything else will become chaotic. This is why we are seeing so much chaos going on because man is not ruling and governing in the purpose and the will of God. Man is rebelling against God. This is why nature become aggressive at man. The fish in the seas want to destroy mankind. The, 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 the storms and the earthquakes and all of these things, they are under man's control and dominion. God has placed all these things in man's power and authority. When man backslide or turn from God to worship the lesser gods, you know, that is that's that is not good in the eyes of God. So what happened here? Everything turned against man. Nature become aggressive towards man. The animals become aggressive towards man. Man become aggressive towards each other because there is no God who created all things at the helm. So if you want perfect order in your life, you must put God first. And when you put him first, all things then will be added. Everything will begin to fall in line. So what the devil tried to do at all time, he wants man to fall out of line with God and cause, and cause all kinds of things among each other. What we are doing is really fighting with each other when we're supposed to be loving one another. Love is the antidote for perfection of joy, peace, and happiness. So this is why if you have love, nothing, nothing can defeat you. It cannot defeat you. Anger cannot defeat you. Love is a perfect antidote for everything that's around you. And this is why the enemy wants you to hate. Glory be to God. Huh? I will answer any question right now. Hallelujah. This is a fellow Jamaican. Lord, I can't add, I can't add my accent. Eh? I'm just talking Jamaican here. I am a Jamaican born. Yes. In Florida. Praise be to God. Amen. Jesus was God's sacrifice to himself on our behalf. Yes. And that's the only sacrifice that God the Father would have accepted. One that is a pure sacrifice with no blemish in it. Every man on earth, they had blemish it. Man is born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Christ knew no sin, but he became sin of choice in order to destroy the works of darkness and to represent mankind in his righteousness. So when God sees man, he will see his son. He will see his son. That means we have no righteousness of ourselves. We have the righteousness of God, son, the Christ. That's why when you come to Christ, come to God, you come to him in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ. This is how your prayers will and shall be answered when you said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you, Father. God the Father, will, when he sees you, he don't see your sins. He sees his Son's righteousness. And this is how your prayers will be heard and will be answered because you did not come in your name, in your own righteousness, but in righteousness. Praise be to God of the Son of God. Oh, I'm in Naples, Florida. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm doing my Bible study right now on, on TikTok online. And that's where the Lord is leading me right now. Um, you know, I have no building to go to and the church is transforming. We are in the end times now. The church is transforming and God is doing a different thing in the church of today. If you notice, you have a lot of people prophesying and having dreams and visions. Some of these people, they for the first time, for the first time, 
experiencing dreams and vision and they somewhat are ecstatic and they are freaking out. So you have a lot of people out there, they are prophesying and saying what God is saying. Some people, you know, they are basically having false things going on with them. But what we should do is when people come and say they have dreams and visions, all we need to do is just listen. Don't, we must never ever try to to criticize and call them false prophets or whatsoever it is because God is speaking now more than ever in our today because the coming of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Can I do a quick prayer for you? Yes. Tell me what do you want me to pray about and I will be happy to pray for you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Whatever you need for me to pray for, I will happy to pray for you. Glory be to God. Happy to pray for you. God is truly amazing. Yes, I am a deliverance minister over 20 years. And I am a prayer warrior. I am filled with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Spirit. God has anointed me for time like this. And I try to be as humble as I can because the flesh will sometimes, you know, want to usurp the, the Holy Spirit. I know about pride and I try not to allow myself to be prideful over anything. God has blessed me tremendously with a lot of his gifts. And as I said, at the same time, I try to be humble with it because, again, I don't want to lose myself in the moment because I'm seeing things happening when I pray and I'm able to speak in tongues, able to cast out devils, able to understand the many things. I'm very careful. This is why I don't push myself up in anything. The gift that I have that God has blessed me with it can take me places. I'm telling you, it can take me places, but I choose not to. I just want, believe me, to be left alone. But God don't want that. God want me to go forth and to declare his message and preach his word and his gospel. And I preach the message of God with humility, with love and with patience. Believe me, I don't want to be a, 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 a one of those people who go viral. I really don't want to go viral. No, I just want to be humble. I want the one and the two and the three people who, who love God and want to learn and want to share and want to be contented in their faith and someone to agree with. Because a lot of times people need someone to agree with because they believe they are strange to believe in a God that you cannot see cannot hear, cannot touch. Yes, and they believe that they are weird because they have the conviction of the Holy Spirit. But this is this is where I come in to help you understand what you're feeling, help you understand in what you're seeing, help you to understand who you are in Christ. Hey, praise be to God. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, so... What we happen, you know, we are supposed to become the Bible. You know that, right? When you are a child of God, you're supposed to become the Bible. Every word from your mouth must be seasoned with the word of God. Yes, and because you are a child of the king, you are engrafted into the olive branch of the Lord. You become the body of Jesus Christ, you must become the word of God. The Bible said the word become flesh and dwell amongst us. Jesus Christ is the word. When we come to Jesus Christ, we share in his body. We are engrafted in his body. So we should become the Bible. So we must study the Bible show ourselves approved. You must be able to speak the word of truth, speak with power and speak with authority. 
People of God can know another person of God. I don't have to recite the Bible and say, John 6, this, say this. Ephesians say this, I just speak the word from my lips as a child of God representing the cross of Jesus Christ. And them who understand the spirit of God, bear witness with your spirit of God that another person is a child of God. Amen. Hallelujah. God is truly Amazing. Amen. Glory be to God. I'm not seeing that love, that roses come my way. I want to see some roses. Show some love that you love the message and you understand what I am saying. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So now it's 7.05 and I'm here. Today is my anniversary, 26 years anniversary. So I'm just coming to spend a short time in morning devotion with as many who want to come and hear my voice. I only declare Jesus Christ and him crucified and raised from the dead and ascend on high. And as many as who receive the son of God to them, he gave power to become sons of God. The angels are considered sons of God, but we are more than the angels. Yes, we are more than the angels. We are in the image and likeness of God. No angel is in the image and likeness of God. We, the people of God, are in his image and likeness. Every entity is out there. The, the fallen angels and the entities out there want to be like a human. They want to be like a human. We don't want to be like them. Well, some people want to be aliens, but we don't want to be like them. They want to be human. They are running from wherever they are in the atmosphere in the planets to come on earth to adopt human ways and they want to be birthed in a human so they will possess a body and be birthed as a human you know how much entities are living in human bodies pretending to be human we can't know them but they are there and the time and the season, in season that we are going through right now is going to reveal all of these entities who are in human beings' body. And that is what's going to happen when you have the change that's about to take place. Very soon, there's going to be a change. The change what is about to take place is the turn of a dispensation from grace to an era of the Antichrist for seven years. So in that time to come, when things change, the entire atmosphere and energy around the earth will change. So a lot of demons and angels and entities who are on earth, they will be able to be seen. People are going to see these things and people are going to realize who they are are and what possess the body that they have it's going to be very clear to them that they are not human they don't have the human spirit they are an entity in the body or the house of a human and it's going to happen it's going to happen and it's going to happen and suddenly believe me it's going to happen we have a lot of people who are not human out there and there are many many I'm talking about a lot who knows maybe the majority of people you see out there are not even human and they don't even know it so when this shift take place very shortly things are going to change big time and if you think that your persecution is coming from <laughs> People, you're making a sad mistake. 
The persecution that is to come is coming from the fallen angels and darkness and demon who you will see, you will be able to see them, touch them, and they will they are going to persecute and destroy humanity and force them on earth to take the mark of the beast or take the mark of Satan. And many who don't take that mark and serve and worship the devil, they will be put to death. You know, that's what it is. It's hard to say and to believe that such things are going to happen, but it's a reality. It's a reality, my friends. You know, when you spend time with God over the years, he begin to reveal some things to you. And it's, it's, it's hard to believe, but it is, it was going to be so. Yes. So people of God, listen, if you are not saved, if you are just basically listening to me mumbling and grow and grumbling, listen, you have the opportunity right now to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Commit yourself to him. Escape what is to come very shortly. The shift is taking place right now as I speak. California is being flooded. New York is going to the interior of the United States all over the world. You're going to have huge changes happening millions of people by the end of this year is going to die they are going to die and many of them is going to die without christ in their life the shift is coming with disasters and destruction and plagues and sicknesses it's going to happen this year i'm telling you I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not asking anyone any question. I'm telling you what is going to happen. It's going to be horrible. This is the worst here in history. And a lot of front in terms of disasters and destruction and debt. It's going to be crazy. So please, if you are hearing my voice, Please give your life to Jesus Christ and ask him to, to, to forgive you of your sin. Repent, turn from your sins. If you're living in a relationship and you're not married, just put it off right now. Say to your lover, hey, I'm not doing this anymore. I have to escape from what is about to come on the earth. And if you want to get married, get married to me right now but I am not going to live this life anymore. Change your life. Turn before it is too late. We have it. We have the opportunity right now. As long as there's life, there is hope. And there's hope for many people right now. The conviction and the calling of God is upon your life. God is giving people's visions and dreams more than any other time right now. Visions and dreams. And believe me, we should take it seriously. I don't like to be negative at all. Oh no, my God, I don't like, I'm not a negative person, I'm positive. But I have to just put forth a warning to as many who will hear my voice. Amen. Okay. Uh, the, what is it? I an ordained Holy Spirit marriage, and I see it's gonna happen. Praise be to God. It's going to happen, my friends. It's going to happen. It will happen. This here is the year of the unsuddenly. A lot of unsuddenly 
things are happening even on the even on the, the you know in sports everybody run out on the field all of a sudden someone collapse and die and suddenly a lot of unsuddenly going on you get in the news someone just died you say but i talked to that person yesterday oh yes they are dead right now and suddenly a lot of unsuddenly events are taking place don't be a part of the unsuddenly nobody can predict their future but you are protected by god god put an edge of protection around his people just like job job had a hedge of protection what happened to job job become compromised by his family job had some little children who loved to party and have fun and do all kinds of things that goes against job faith and job would have sacrifice make sacrifice on their behalf in case that they should blaspheme god while they are partying and having fun the devil knew something was wrong in job household so he went to petition god for job and god knew exactly what satan plan was all about and god said Oh, said Satan, I notice you are observing my servant Job, that there is none like him on the face of the earth. So Job, so the devil laughed and said, Ha! Huh, does Job serve God for nothing? If I put my hands on him, he will curse you to the face. God who knows the heart of Job said, Okay, go and try, do all what you can. Don't kill him. Don't hurt him. Don't harm him. Do what you can. People of God, listen to me very carefully. The devil leave the presence of God and he begin to use the weather. He cause tornado, fire from heaven. He used the Sabines and the Chaldeans people to come and affect his job life. And he also had the media a person to carry the news back to Job to tell him what happened. You know what today similar things are happening. You have the agents of darkness working on behalf of the devil to disrupt and destroy your life. Want you to curse God and blaspheme the word of God to lack confidence and believe that God hates you and God is destroying the world and God is doing all of this. This is the devil's doing. The devil called fire from heaven to burn up and destroy Job children. The disasters that you're seeing going on is not of God. This is the devil working his supernatural power to destroy the people of this world. It's through God's grace and mercy. That's why we are here today. The more the people of God turn from God is the more disasters and destruction that you're seeing. People have to pray. People need to walk righteous and holy before god the church is a problem of today not the world if the church compromise themselves before god you're going to see the disasters intensified so if the church begin to pray and come together as one and begin to pray and to intercede on behalf of the world the power of god will be made known Praise be to God. So the church has to play a significant role. But instead, the church is divided. What the church is doing is fighting amongst each other. They are compromising their faith. They are getting into politics and joining the wrong things. A lot of church are agreeing with abortion and the killing of babies. They are agreeing with many things that is an abomination to the most high God. And this is why you're seeing what you're seeing right now. Because the church will not fulfill their role as people of God to be a witness of the kingdom of God. And this is what is happening. The church is the problem, not the world. If the people of God come together and pray, hold hand, love and agree, we will see a significant change in the world. So when prophet comes up and they start to talk about the world is committing sin and the world is doing that, that's what the world do. The world sin. The people who are sinners do sin, but the church must be living 
and upholding righteousness before God and standing in the gap at all times and being a witness to the cross and Jesus Christ. But they are not doing, they want wealth and prosperity and money. They are doing all the things that will give Satan authority and power to do exactly what he's doing right now. So Job was compromised by his children because he will not discipline them. He will not speak out against their doing. What he do was to make sacrifice and pray on behalf of them in their rebellious state. And because of that, Satan was able to petition God on Job's behalf and destroy and kill his children. And that is what is happening today. The devil is able to kill our children because parents ain't talking to their kids and rebuking and chastising them in holiness and in righteousness. And this is why the devil is able to snatch our kids from under our belt. Amen. <laughs> oh, praise be to God. I hope I just made sense rambling on. Glory be to God. Amen. Seems like everyone gets silent on me right now. I wonder why. Have I just said something that don't make sense? Hey. I hope not. Hallelujah. Ain't that something? So, praise the Lord. This is my morning devotion. I've got to get up because today is my 26th anniversary. And I'm just going to go out and enjoy and have fun in this day in the beauty of holiness. Amen. So, Father, we give you thanks and praise, Lord, for this moment, for this time, Lord, in fellowship. Thank you, Lord, for the few people, Lord, who are able to hear my voice this morning a lot of things may sound shocking to them something may not make sense to them but i pray god that they will go forth and to study your word and to search out the things that you are saying concerning us at this time father i just plead the blood of jesus christ over every soul right now that is on this line. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that the spirit of victory, yes, praise be to God, will guide them throughout this day. I declare no accident, no incident, no death, no destruction, no plague, no sickness, no hurt, no harm will come up on any of your children in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare this day to be a blessed, a prosperous, a productive day in Jesus name no disease no germs no bacteria no virus in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that this day will be a productive day we are truly blessed of God highly favored of the Lord we are the head and not the tail above and not beneath because we are more than conqueror through Jesus Christ I declare that we will function according to design we will see the things you want us to see hear the things you want us to hear smell the thing you want us to smell the water that we drink even though it's poisoned it will never hurt or harm us the food that we eat we command it to be sanctified, to be cleansed. No food will harm us in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our feet will take us where we need to go. We will do and handle the things you want us to handle in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that our environment will be the environment that you make it to be, Lord, that we can walk with joy, peace, happiness, and contentment in this day oh praise be to god to god we give the glory the honor and the praise in jesus name amen <laughs> oh praise be to god so i will be here i don't know if we'll be here at eight o'clock this evening because today is my anniversary so let me see possible on this week i am on leave 
So I'll be here in the morning doing morning devotion. But in the evening, I will be doing Bible study and I will be doing spiritual awareness and discussion. And I will be doing so many things, sharing the word of God each and every day. So just follow and like. And God loves you. He keeps you throughout this day. Amen. Glory be to God. Thank you so much, Maria. God bless you. I can assure you that marriage is the only time you make compromises. Yes, you have to make compromise. That's the only time you compromise when you are married. I, I learned that. <laughs> Oh, praise be to God. Amen. Bye now.